Hi, this is Alan of ICT Billet. Today we're going to look at some of the differences on these LS engines that you'll need to know when picking out an engine and bracketry and other swap accessories. So let's look at this aluminum block here that we have. You'll see that it's got two holes here for the accessory brackets. These are not present on any of the steel block engines on trucks, SUVs, and other vehicles that came up with steel engine block. So this one here you won't be able to do anything with on a truck block that doesn't have it. But this area will be here on the trucks, so you can use a drill template and actually drill this out to an M10 1.5 hole, and that'll allow you to get accessories down there. So the next thing you'll need to know is the, the belt offset. So this one here is a truck and SUV uh, crank pulley. So you'll see the hub here is really long, so this brings the belt out the furthest out of these three belts the furthest away from the block. So this will give you the, your most options as far as accessories, like this truck power steering pump here. This cannot fit with this pulley or that one because it'll go back so far that it hit the head. Same with this alternator here. It would have to be out past the head to be able to use the Camaro crank pulley or the Corvette. So this pulley here is a 9802 Camaro or any of your GTO. So it's kind of a mid-range between these three. And then this one here is a Corvette, so it's got the shortest projection, meaning the belt's the closest to the front of the block. And also you'll notice too on the Corvette, here's a Corvette alternator, you'll notice this bolt pattern here is wider than this truck alternator we have here. So this bolt pattern is different on the Corvette, uh, the new SS Core, uh, CTSV, and the 2010 and up Camaro. It's, they all have the wider bolt pattern, which we have a bracket, so you could convert that to any of our other brackets. So this alternator here, this is a 105 amp alternator. So it's the only alternator out of all the trucks that have this rear mounting tab. None of the other ones have any bolts back here. And then this is a 160 amp truck alternator. So it has the same bolt pattern as this one, other than this pulley, because it's larger case, it's bigger diameter, and it's deeper as well, which this won't allow you to bolt it in front of the head, like you see on this one here. It will not fit. It's a little bit too deep. So these both have the same connector plug, so they're interchangeable there. It's just this pulley is raised up in the case because this diameter is larger, so that'll make your belt length longer as well. Now here's a timing cover from a Gen 4 engine. Note the hole here. So when you're trying to pick out an engine, uh, you want to know if it's a 24X or a 58X, meaning how many teeth are on the reluctor wheel that the crankshaft sensors read. So right here on the engine, this would be the spot to look for in any vehicle, is look for this sensor here. This one does not have it, this one does. So this means that it's a 58X reluctor wheel. We're looking at the power steering pumps here now. So this one has the smallest shaft diameter. This is out of a Corvette. Notice that it doesn't have a reservoir mounted on it. So it's not quite as universal to use in most of the swaps. And the pulley here, it's got very little projection. So it's pretty tight to the pump. And this one here is a plastic pulley that's used on the older Corvettes with LS engines. The newer ones were steel with spokes on it. It looks a lot nicer. Same thing, they swap, they're interchangeable. And then onto the 9802 Camaro power steering pump here. This one's really popular, used on a lot of our brackets. It's because it's got the reservoir mounted to it. It fits the front of the head, and it looks good. So this diameter here is the same as the truck, other than the projection's different. This one sticks out not that much. This one kicks out quite a ways further. So these pulleys are not interchangeable because of that. So any of your aftermarket doormen or anything, you, you could get those to fit on this, but it doesn't mean that the belt's going to line up. So just assume you have to use the pulley that came with your power steering pump. If not, it will cause your belt to be off slightly, which will throw the belt. Next, we're going to look at the water pumps here. So these are your most common pumps you're going to see in your truck and SUVs. So your older Gen 3 engines, they're all going to have this old swooping neck here where it exits to the top of the radiator. 
This one's a lot shorter on the Gen 4s. Uh, they both have the same mounting height here, so if you have any accessory brackets that'll mount to it, these are interchangeable with the belts, the same position. Uh, the most noticeable thing here, though, is if you have a VVT engine, you're going to need to stick with this newer pump because it's got this large recessed area. That way your timing cover sensors, anything projecting out of your timing cover, it'll have plenty of room. You'll notice this one's flat. There's just very little room here to work with. And then this is your LS1 pump off a 9802 Camaro. It's most common on any swap. It's a good price pump. It's fairly cheap to buy compared to some of your LS3 pumps here. Uh, the pulley is real wide on this one. So these were used on LS1 Corvette and Camaro. And they get away with that because this pulley is so wide. Your Corvette ran on the back side here, and then the 9802 Camaro ran on the front. So we typically use these on all the truck brackets as well because it doesn't have this neck exiting high so it looks a lot better. We'll just put water pump spacers behind it to bring it out to line it up with the truck. So here's your Corvette LS2. You'll notice the pulley is really narrow so there's only one belt area that you'll be able to use and that's for the Corvette spacing. Um, your mounting height here is a little bit different than any of these other pumps. So it's not the same as the truck, nor the same as like this LS3. You'll notice as well on the LS3, this is a 2010 to 2015 Camaro. So it's different. Still the same belt spacing as your two trucks, so they're interchangeable there. But this height is about three inches from the front of the block versus one and a half inches here. So if any of the accessories mount to this area, it's gonna throw it off. Now if you're using a LS3, Corvette. This belt's a lot tighter to the block. You'll notice as well that these are moved in quite a bit too. Notice this large area on the back side here. So all your VVT uh, engines will work. It'll clear your timing cover. Now these LS3s are pretty nice because it has the driver's side exit for your top radiator hose, which most small and big block engines, they all had a driver's side top radiator hose so makes your hose a little shorter so it doesn't have to run all the way around the front of your engine. Uh, another difference here between these is the bolt pattern of the thermostat. So your two LS3s here and your newer Gen 4 truck pump they all have a large bolt pattern so they're not interchangeable with the rest. So that about wraps up all of our LS accessory drive components here. So for more information be sure to visit ICT Billet dot com for all your LS swap needs and be sure to click the tips and guides button for more information on all these and more